well, in fact. It's been a basically about a week since uh, since we've casted here as far as match casting goes here on Honcast. So I am excited to be back. I'm excited to get back in the casting mode. Uh, and uh, and I cannot wait to get going with today. With that said, I'm Breaking CBK, of course. Uh, I'm going to be doing some solo castings today. I have a couple of reasons for that. The big one being, we are doing some replay casts here today. Uh, real quickly, as, as we're going to start moving along here. These, this is going to be replay casting of the Southeast Asian Sound Blaster Tournament. Of course, Southeast Asia, this is for the Sound Blaster Heroes League overall. Southeast Asia, they have two qualifiers where the NAEU region has four qualifiers. So this is first of their two qualifiers over there in Southeast Asia. And obviously with the time difference and everything, it happened very early on this morning. Uh, but uh, we're coming back with you. We figured these are very, very important matchups. We, um, we're going to cast back-to-back -back today, re replay cast. We're going to cast both semifinals. Uh, this one followed by the next best of three and the winner of each of these semifinals are going to be advancing on to those group stages here in the Sound Blasters Heroes League. So uh, it is very, very important today and obviously today we're also going to get some good information as far as what these teams are about to an extent. Again, these are these are teams we don't really cover at all here at Honkast and, and you know it, it is a little bit unfortunate you know, we've got the NAEUC to worry about for the most part but there's a lot going on over in Southeast Asia. The Honkast site does a good job of keeping up with it with articles and whatnot but as far as casting goes we just really don't get a whole lot of coverage from over there so I personally am really excited to see what these teams bring to the table. I hope that you guys are, because that's what today is going to be about. It's going to be about Southeast Asia, and deservedly so. So here we are in the first semifinal matchup. We have DC Gaming going to be going up against Tomato Esports. Yes, that's right, Tomato Esports. Not sure what the deal is there, but Tomato Esports is sure enough the, the team over here on the Hellborn side. So uh, DC Gaming, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, I was informed, I believe DC DC Gaming is actually a G League division, uh, G League team over there in in Southeast Asia, uh, and what that means that that of course means that they're that's basically the diamond equivalent of their Han Tour. So this is actually a pretty good team here. Uh, Mado, I believe, is in in D1, which is basically the gold equivalent for our Han Tour. So some quality teams playing here. So with that said, DC uh, DC Gaming definitely the favorite here uh, when it comes down to it in this matchup, but we'll see if Tomato Esports can can make something happen and perhaps pull through. But here we are in game number one, and we are moving along here very, very nicely. The other matchup, by the way, it's going to be Orange Esports uh, taking on, you know, I probably should have double-checked, Orange Esports versus Team Turtle Gamings. Not Turtle Masters. Turtle Masters, uh, that is not them. They did not participate in this qualifier here. I'm sure they'll be in the next one, but it's Orange Esports versus Team Turtle Gamings. That is in the other semifinal matchup. So, again, we got back-to-back -back semifinals here. Both are very, very important, as I said earlier, simply because the winner of each of these semifinals advances on to those group stages, ultimately, to play against the North American European teams later on here in the Sound Blasters Heroes League. So, really, really excited for that. Anyways, we're moving along here in the drafting stage. In fact, we are already in the next set of picks. And, you know, something important to mention about this as well I believe the patch changes are in when this match happened. Let me double check on that. Um, this is an easy way to check it. Willowmaker, 825 physical damage at level 3. Uh, okay, maybe they weren't actually, because I know that that was one of the big changes. Uh, I believe the Willowmaker was nerfed down to about 750 damage at level 3. So maybe it actually isn't in the game yet, unless the tooltip uh, is just not correct. But... Uh, so honestly, I'm not sure what that said. And maybe the Staff of the Master, maybe we could check that way. It would say the Staff of the Master effect, wouldn't it? Of, uh, of certain heroes. Let's see if uh, Legionnaire, where's our boy Legionnaire? There's Legionnaire. Yeah, it is. Okay, so this is post-patch. It is post-patch, sure enough. It looks like it. Let me double check that on Deadwood then. Deadwood, 725. Yeah, so I think the tooltip here is wrong, actually, on this one, 825. It's supposed to be 725. Anyway, so that's actually pretty important because the patch did hit. Um... The, the patch did hit here as far as uh, this match is concerned. So both matches, this is going to be post-patch. So it'll also be a good way for us to, to see what's going on with the patch. Obviously, a lot of those staff and the master changes. Don't really expect any of those to have a huge impact on the competitive scene, at least not right away. There's maybe talks of maybe Riftwalker appearing. Maybe Legionnaire with that. I mean, the staff of the master for Legionnaire seems like that's the big one, and that would be fun to see. Uh, but uh, but Pebbles and Deadwood did receive some nerfs here 
in this recent patch, as well as Lodestone for that matter. Um, so definitely a lot of burst damage being toned down a little bit when it comes to heroes like that. So anyways, keeping that in mind, here we are. We're already in the next tier of picks. Let's, let's just overlook real quickly what actually happened. We had Tempest, Bubbles, Master of Arms, Wretched Ag, Rally, and Parasite. The bands were Keeper, Scout, Fade, Engineer. So... Uh, again, this is a Southeast Asian scene. Nice. Expect maybe a little bit of difference, but honestly, so far, it's nothing it's nothing too off the wall. Uh, the Keeper of the Force ban, we don't see that as much anymore in the NAU region, but over here, still ban-worthy in, in some cases, so going to be banned by these teams. Uh, as far as the picks are concerned, again, nothing uh, nothing too off the wall when it comes to those. Uh, and then the next year, bam, we got Sam Wraith, Draconis, Nighthound, Lodestone, Swiftblade, Deadwood. So, <laughs> a couple of bands thrown in there that are a little bit, uh, a little bit kind of head scratcher. But again, this is this is a scene that uh, I personally don't watch much of. I know of a lot of people tuning in. It's the same case. We don't really have a whole lot of information on these teams, their play styles, their ultimate success. It's so it's it's a learning experience for us all. Let's just say uh, when it comes down to it. So. Here we are, uh, so keeping that in mind, the next uh, tier of picks, we have the Soul Stealer pick over here for DC Gaming, followed up by, I believe it was Magmus, yeah, Magmus, then there's the Torture to round things up, and now Tomato Esports going to be finishing off their lineup over here when it's all said and done, and it looks like they need a support still. Um, you still got a Luna. I think a Luna has to be your powerful option here. Power Mancer, perhaps. Torture was just picked up by DC Esports, or DC Gaming, excuse me. So, I would think between Pyromancer and Aluna, Andromeda actually going to be picked up here. And, that, you know, that definitely makes sense as well, especially with that swap presence. A good counter to Tempest uh, on top of just being a support lately in, in the NAU scene, at least. I mean, there's been some teams. I know TMSR, Team USA, they've actually been picking up Andromeda quite a bit when it comes to a support presence. Now, I will say this is not really a physical threatening team. Not to say that makes Andromeda a bad pick, but they aren't really going to necessarily take advantage of that Aurora uh, as much. Even even the Aura on top of that, the... Uh, I'm blanking on the name now. The Dimensional Link on top of that. Sure, Wretched Hack could definitely become a late game hitter and that could be effective for her, but... You know, the Andromeda, I, I think, usually goes better overall with that physical hard-hitting carry. Uh, and just more so physical damage in general, something like a Deadwood on your team, uh, a Monkey King even, you know, well, uh, with that recent balance patch to Monkey King, maybe not him anymore, but um, anyways, you get the point. But So that's, that's I guess, my one uh, critique there on the Andromeda support pick coming out over here for the Hellborn side. But other than that, pretty, uh, pretty good when it's, all, when it's all said and done. So for some reason, my... Locking on a hero is not working. I'm not sure why. Let me actually check the binding for that real quickly. I don't know if my controls got right. Actually, my controls... I, you know what? I did reset my controls. That makes sense. Let me real quickly change that here. There we go. That should be good. All right. Yeah, we're good to go. All right. So, start off this game. Oh, let me switch the overlay as well. Uh, obviously, there is no delay on this cast, so I should be a lot better as far as the overlay switching and whatnot. Just remind me if I seem to forget. Um, there is no delay because it's being a replay cast here. So, no, no point to do so. So we do see Tomato Esports, all five of them, but it's sent down to the bottom lane right here. They do get down the early ward of sight, uh, in the camp, so gonna protect the, or block the pole camp even. Um, as far as DCES is concerned, by the way, uh, looks like uh, they do got Master of Arms. He's gonna be that short lane carry. Soulsteel is gonna be going middle here, actually. That's interesting. They're going to send Rally Suicide and Tempest in the jungle, but it's going to be Torturer, Master of Arms, bottom? Interesting. They're going to leave Soul Stealer to himself, unless they do a Torturer Soul Stealer mid, which, I don't know, that seems a little, a little odd. Soul Stealer could have been playing against Bubbles down here at the bottom lane. Uh, in that matchup, and definitely, you know, being in that short lane, having Tempest in their presence in the jungle, I would think Soul Stealer would have a decent time. Speaking of Tempest, actually, Tempest in a lot of trouble right here. Tempest made a falling. One more auto attack. Yes, the SmackDown kill. And you see, ah, that's one of the better taunts right there. So big Bloodlust kill coming out in favor of the Hellborn team. Tempest, I believe, who's just simply uh, trying to play some wards right there. Um, yeah, actually, I don't know if Riley's, I think Tempest might have just been scouting things out in the end, but. Uh, um, that's actually another important no thing to note right there. Parasite did get the leech. 
uh, to go for the Bloodlust kill. So you see he's going to kind of hug the lane a little bit right here. Leech a little, speaking of Leech, Leech a little experience. And uh, ta-cha. And sure enough, once he hits level 2, he get that infest and go into the jungle. But, uh, you know, it's... I, I, Hey, he got the Bloodlust kill. So in the end, it's hard to say that that was a bad move by Parasite right there. The fact if without Leech, I don't think that would have been a Bloodlust kill. It would have been very, very close. To, I, I don't think it would have been a Bloodlust kill without Leech. So, um... Definitely, definitely makes sense. Uh, Beef is actually... Okay, so DC Fabulous just qualified for G League, which is, again, the diamond equivalent winning over Impunity, actually. So, apparently... So, so they weren't in G League, but they just qualified for it. And they beat Impunity. Definitely a team that uh, we do know. So, yeah, and again, these two teams, the fact that they made it to the semifinals here of one of their two qualifiers for the Sound Blaster Heroes League should mean something as well. I mean... <laughs> Again, that's a very popular region over there. It's definitely grown big time as far as the competitive scene as well. I mean, there's no doubt that it has really, really, really progressed. So, um, again, very excited at the fact that we get, get to come here today and kind of get a first look here at the Sound Blasters Heroes League, at least, what the Southeast Asian scene is going to bring to the table. Anyways, going back to this, this lineup, though, I mean, you look at Soulstealer Torture in the middle lane against Magmus Andromeda. Both, both lanes, honestly, are a little funky. The Magmus Andromeda, it does have the good points done in the Andromeda Comet, but at the same time, Andromeda of only a 400 range in terms of her auto attack range, not the best harasser. Uh, so not necessarily the best setup for this Magmus in the first place. Maybe if there's a melee, it would be better, but the fact they're going up against two range definitely hurts it. Now, Souls to their Torture, though, on the other hand, again, that too is kind of an awkward because they could have easily done Torture Master of Arms. And... Uh, and could have easily done Torture Master of Arms in the middle lane, had the double stun themselves, had still the good range, and they could have very likely had a better chance of getting a kill. And against Soul Studio, you would think would still have a fairly good time against Bubbles down here at the bottom lane. Speaking of Bubbles, actually, he's going aggressive on Master of Arms. Oh no, Master of Arms, is he gonna fall right here? Looks like it! Yes, he will! Another taunt. Uh, these guys love to smack down. Uh, I, I love that fact, but how about that? A 2 nothing start already for Tomato Esports here in what is game number one, so. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that, that's definitely something. We do see Wretched Egg at the top lane. Wow! Able to get away, barely dying. You see Rally also very low, so clearly some man-up action going on at the uh, at the top lane right there. But they are going to send Master of Arms, so they are going to make the adjustment now. They send Master of Arms mid. You see Magmus actually stunning in right away right there. Comma stun is going to follow, but here comes the response by DC Gaming. Is it going to be enough for the kill on Magmus? He does have Steam Bath. He's waiting to use it, though, for the right time, and he found it, and he is going to be fine, so... Master of Arms clearly showing, though, he's not afraid of playing aggressive there. Puts himself in a vulnerable position, but uh, stays alive, uses a regen, going to be fine. Soul Stealer, how was he doing? He is 11-3 currently, and gets what is now a 13-7 bubble. So he's coming into this lane already two levels down now. As back to the middle lane, and sure enough, there you go. It does collapse on a Magnus. But again, this is something that could have been happening from the very beginning of this game for DC Gaming. So you really got to still scratch your head at that choice to set up the lanes how they did and then eventually make that adjustment. It just seems kind of silly. So not sure what uh, what they were thinking there. But I guess, you know, what's done is done. And uh, we, we do see the change has happened. But again, Soul Stealer, he is in a lot of... He's in a difficult spot now. If this was uh, from the beginning, that short lane again with that Tempest presence at least being in the jungle, I'm sure he could have been decent. You know, m not the best starter simply because of no souls added up, obviously. I'm sure he would have been fine. But in this case now, he's under level compared to Bubbles. Bubbles is going to be hitting 6 here soon, I would assume. And actually, if Bubbles hits level 6 here in the near future, I could see him going for a kill. Soul Stealer needs to be really careful right here. He's playing aggressive himself, but he needs to be very careful. Oh man, if he had level 6 right there, that was definitely going to be a kill. It still could be if Soul Stealer's not careful again. Uh, he does have his bottle right here. Some more Demon Hands coming out. The Planet Guys have actually Shell Surf away from Bubbles. He doesn't have enough regen on him himself to look to play aggressive. So Soul Stealer actually boxing out Bubbles there, noticing that he didn't have regen perhaps. Gets the job down. What is Andromeda thinking? Andromeda going uphill. Oh man, that was not the smart move. I caught that kind of midway, I guess. But uh, I, Andromeda going uphill like that into blind, not not usually a good thing. Completely gets turned on, and down goes Andromeda back to the bottom lane. Several lanes having some action here. Uh, we do see though, lane's gonna be pushed up a little bit by Soul Stealer. But uh, we got DC Gaming tying it up at two games apiece right here. As Magmus gonna stun Master of Arms, but just more so for harassment. Soul Stealer Bubbles once again. Soul Stealer's gonna fall. Oh, looks like Soul Stealer got caught a little too far. Yeah, as I was saying, the level six bubbles. He comes back into the lane. He got his bottle. He got his regen. 
And he ends up using that Kelfield to set up the kill onto Soul Stealer. So, unfortunately, Soul Stealer yeah, pushing up, a little, playing a little bit too aggressive, and he's definitely noticing that. He was, you know, you can you can argue you kind of need to do that as a Soul Stealer, especially when you are behind. You know, really start adding up those demon hands, but clearly right there, playing a little too aggressive, and uh, caught. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce these names, man. I mean, <laughs> so many of these names are just. Uh, are just difficult. <laughs> are just difficult. I'll leave it at that. Oh, top lane Parasite and Wretched Ag collapsed for the kill in a rally. Parasite moving around. He is level six. He's been kind of quiet this game so far. Well, I say quiet lightly because he did get the bloodlust kill, or he he was involved in that at least at the very beginning of the game, and he's involved in the kill right there. So he's one oh one one. It seems like he's getting along actually pretty nicely. Three hundred and five gold per minute. And speaking of that, Wretched Ag's been having a very very good time at the top side. 33 and 15 compared to your 6 and 1 rally. Remember, that's a wretched hag that not only is in a matchup that's definitely favorable for her already, but she got the bloodlust kill going into the laning phase. So, uh, it definitely makes sense that uh, that wretched hag's having a pretty good time. Middle lane, this torture master of arms, again, this proved to be a very smart adjustment and again, still a little curious as to why it wasn't that, like that from the beginning, but it is no doubt working out here. Master of Farms recovering pretty nicely in that middle lane. As Tempest has actually moved way to the bottom lane. We just speak in the middle lane. We do got Parasite running. It's almost seven. Does have the face. I could use it right there. Master of Farms. Gonna get exploded on the initial stun from Magnus. Set up the job. And Torturer is gonna get away. Not much more he could have done right there. So good coordination coming out from Tomato Esports. Able to execute the kill. I'll say this much. I mean, again, this is just game one so far of today. Of this, uh, of our Southeast Asian coverage here for the Sound Blaster Heroes League, but these guys, these guys like playing aggressive. That, that's one thing I'm definitely noticing right off the bat. And you know, that's something we've known from about the scene for a long time, and all the way back to Dusk Bing Gaming when they first made their appearance um, on the competitive scene. Hell, there's even a team poll, I think it was P.O.L. I forget what it stood uh, stood for, but I believe they were from uh, they were from Malaysia. They, I think they were kind of the original, original. Duskbin's known as the more popular one because they'd be Fnatic at that time, and they definitely had a successful career, but this is a team called Pola. I think it was P.O.L. If I'm that was way back in the day, back in the game replay tournaments. I don't know if someone can maybe refresh my memory in chat, perhaps, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Anyway, it's kind of a side note there. But yeah, throughout, throughout Southeast Asia's history that we've seen them in the competitive scene, whether it's online or at DreamHacks, I mean, they, they, they tend to be more of the aggra aggressive play style. Yeah, People of Lozon. Yeah, that's what it was. Yep, I knew it. Madagascar Dave. Madagascar Dave, thank you. People of Lozon. Yeah, so they were, they were, I think, the original Southeast Asian team that came onto the online on competitive scene, but uh, again, Duskbill was more the, the more popular one because of their success. Bottom lane, Bat Blast. I, did that even hit? I don't even think no. it's a Soul Stealer right there. They do get the kill to Tempest. Kalefield's gonna come out though. Soul Stealer overseeing as well, but even with missing the Bat Blast, it's not gonna matter. Porn me, please. On it's Bubbles gets secure. credit for the double tap. That's an easy name to say. Andromeda trying to get away right here, but he's see the fork lightning attempt. Gonna miss. Andromeda trying to get away. I love Vodka. It's gonna go down. Which is he has some Vodka right there to, to go to cry away. Start. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Anyways, he goes down. <laughs> Master of Arms now. Maybe overextending a little bit too much right here. You see him. I'm sure should turn that on, actually. He is gonna be gone out, and sure enough, he will fall too. Torture also got picked off throughout all that. So, uh, in the end, Tomato Esports. Was that four hero kills in total? I think it was. And what, did Rally die too? No, Rally didn't die, did he? No, he he, he, he stayed alive. Yeah, he only has the one death from earlier, so. Um, yeah, well, four four deaths, I believe. They're on the side of, uh, they're on the side of DC Gaming, so. Nine to three hero kill lead in favor of Tomato Esports here. Again, in game number one. We do see Magnus. Oh, Tempest was running out. If he ulted right away right there, that could have been something. But Andromeda got the common sun off. Going to be fine. <coughs> we do see Master and Torture, though. They are going to start pushing out. Might not be the best of moves. Right Jack blinks in really aggressively right there. Okay, she doesn't have her path. Blast by Shell Surf and the Saga to see. There's the Kelfield. Down goes Tempest. And now the chase continues. Energizer is going to be used right there. Master of Arms in some trouble. Magnus stuns over the side. Master is going to fall. And now an 11 to 3 hero kill lead. Tomato Esports, they are on a roll right now. 5,800 gold lead 
8,000 experience. And look at Wretched Hag, man. 422 gold per minute. You know, this game's been pretty, pretty action-oriented. Here we have 14 kills and 10 minutes into the game, practically. So I haven't had too much time to break down ex as far as items and whatnot, but you just look at Wretched Hag. She's already well on her way to... Well, I, I'm actually... I assume that's going to be a life brand. Did go to the Ring of Teacher and a Neophytes book, but I assume that is going to eventually turn into a life brand here. More of the usual. Magnus, about 800 gold saved up. He's got his Steam Boots bottle and power supply. Oh, Compel going to miss right there. That was a big miss. And actually, Magnus should be able to survive. He actually stuns away. <coughs> yeah, if he uh, if he got stunned right there, it could have been a different story with the Compel, but... A little bit of a sidestep on top of uh, Raleigh not able to hit it, but... As far as the Legion team is concerned, I mean, Soul Steel is your best farmer now at 270 gold per minute, and we all know about Soul Steel, how fast he can, he can recover, but this is not a game that's looking like he's going to get that time even. Torture gets called on right there. Tempest being collapsed on. Here comes Soul Steel, though. The response. There's the seismic slam, but down goes Rally. Master of Arms. He's going to be stunned as well. Double tap for Porn Me, please. The tap is him in. It does catch Ratchetak, but at what cost? He falls shortly after, and Soul Steel, all he can do is just sit back and cry tears as his team just falls all over the place. He's going to run into bubbles right here now. He may fall too. Those tears are going to be for him now. He gets killed. Another SmackDown kill. And Tomato Esports, I think they're on their way to, to an easy victory here in game number one. Again, this is, I think it's considered to be an upset here. It's it going into it apparently TCES. They were the favorite at going qualifying for G League. Tomato Esports, not so much, but Tomato Crushing, man. The Tomatoes. They're crushing! They're making tomato juice! Or something. I'm trying too hard. 16 to 4 hero kill lead. What is Wretched Hat gonna get right here? It, it, he has enough for the. Ketchup. It <laughs> probably would have been a better better word right there. <laughs> There's the life brand purchase. Yeah, so he's just waiting to get back to base right there. And he's good to go. Uh, yeah, it's so. <laughs> A DC game, and I mean, I think they they kind of shot themselves in the foot. I I really think that 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 lane decision from the very beginning, it we saw how much it snowballed, and you know what a lot of our competitors talk about all the time is a big winning that middle lane is just so important, especially right now in the meta game. Winning of that middle lane can definitely determine the outcome. So what Mel was talking about it's like 93.6 percent of victories are won after the middle lane is won. Obviously a bullshit stat in the end, but it, you get the point that it's damn important. So, you look back to what DC Gaming decided to do there from the very beginning. The, the lane setup, it just didn't make a lot of sense. All of a sudden, Master of Arms in the match with the bottle lane. He got killed. That didn't help either, as he was playing a little bit too aggressive against Bubbles. They eventually made the switch, and they, they came back in the middle lane. But by that time, you know, with the switch happening, Solstice was continuing to not do the best. Bubbles overtook. Wretch Dag was having absolute free from the top lane. Parasite eventually got picked up to level 6, level 7. He started to roam, and it just hasn't stopped since. So, uh, the decision, again, for the very... Even, even if they went the lanes that would have made more sense, I don't know. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it would be a different outcome, honestly. I just think the aggressive play of Tomato Esports really caught DC Gaming off guard right here. When you see Soul Steel going to be jumped, pause coming out. Wait, never mind. We are in a replay. We got the auto skip pause. Thank God. Wretched coming in. A bad boss that will connect. Soul Steel goes on. Magnus, a beautiful line stunts. Tons of three right there. Offensive Master's call going to be coming out. Can Master Arms get away? Well, the answer is no. 20 to 4 Hero Kill lead. Choo choo. Here we go with the train now from Tomato Esports. And you can't blame them because it's what's it's what's necessary, it's what's working here. And it's what's gonna win them the game in the end. Portal key picked up on Magnus, by the way. I'm not sure why it's grayed out. I think that's a bug with the replays. But uh, anyways, he does have his portal key. He used that right there to to get the kill. We do see a blessed orb already picked up on Wretched Hag, so <laughs> she is very close to that Grimoire power now. And Rally's just going to fall back. Not much he's going to be able to do right there. I don't know if, I don't know if DC Gaming is going to be able to do much more as far as the recovery chance here for them. It's it, they, they just don't have anything going right now. <laughs> I mean, just look at that goal per minute chart. Holy crap. The draft, I mean, I don't even know if the draft was horrible by any means. I don't, I don't think it was that bad. I mean... Again, if they, if they went with the lanes that made sense with the Soul Stealer short, Master of Arms, Torture in that middle lane, Rally the Suicide, those aren't bad lanes necessarily. 
Tempest. Andromeda's actually going to get bursted down right there, but at what cost? Magnus, a beautiful eruption of the Codex from behind. Down goes Tempest. So serious says, here's my chance. Never mind, not going to happen. He's going to eventually fall right there. Rally trying to hold his ground. He's going to cut through the trees now. Probably not going to get away. Rally goes down. Master of Arms says Sayonara, and so does Torture. He's just going to run away right now. So, no, well, never mind. Magnus, did he find him? Doesn't have mana. Doesn't have mana for the stun. He's just going to try to run after him right here. He needs the 140. He's definitely not going to get it. <laughs> and actually, okay, he's going to be fine. As he avoids the second stun right there. Tomato Esports, man. These guys are on a mission. They want to qualify for those group stages. They want to show the NAU scene what they're all about. And right now, they're doing that. They are looking good, man. This is a fun team right here in Tomato Esports. I'm a, I'm becoming a fan of them quickly with a play style like this. I'm playing damn, damn aggressive. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think back to the, the, the picking stage overall, and you know, figuring what heroes maybe they could have gone in certain places of others. Um, nothing's uh, hitting me off the top of my head, so. But again, so I, I don't think DC Gaming drafted poorly. I think it's hard to, to sit here and say that, but in the end, this is just more so Tomato Esports outplaying them. Now, Tempest holds him in a pretty big ultimate right there. He is eventually going to get stopped up by the swap. He goes down. Patrick coming out right there for Parasite, of all heroes. And Torture is just trying to run away. I, I, think, I think it's time to throw in the towel here if you're DC Gaming. As a genocide going to come out right there for Tomato Esports. Look at the gold! Look at the golden experience up here. It is very, very rarely this far to one side <laughs> in any competitive match. The Hellborn takes down a Legion tower. Right now, that is the case. What is this guy? Stupid baby? Stupid baby? What's up? <laughs> Porn me, please, stupid baby. I'm Pawn Star. <laughs> Amori boys and I love vodka. These guys. These guys. Tomato Esports is probably one of my new favorite teams, honestly. <laughs> and their names are amazing. Their play style is awesome. And DC Gaming, I, yeah, I wonder if they just got caught off guard. I mean, I wonder if they knew much about these guys in the first place going into it. Now, triple stack gain chance. That's going to be actually some pretty good farm for Soul Stealer right here. I'm a little surprised that they're even still hanging on to this game. I wonder if they even realize how far they are behind, but... Um, not going to give in. Not going to give in just yet. Here in game one of this best set of three. They say there's always still a chance, damn it. There's always still a chance. Soul Stealer, he is working towards a shrunken head, but and that's a great item against the Hellborn team. You do look at the Legion team, by the way. No Mystic Vestments. I know it's been a struggling game, but... Get those Mystic Vestments, man. If, if you are still going to play this game and you want any chance of coming back, you need Mystic Vestments. Because... <laughs> This is basically all magic damage here on the Hellborn side. Other than the occasional right-click auto attacks, you're dealing with all magic damage here. So there is no excuse to not have at least one of... Everyone should have a Mystic Vestment here. You should buy 20 Mystic Vestments if you could. <laughs> Soul Stealer not having the best game, just like his whole team, frankly. Parasite 8 0 oh, 7 now, so more boys looking good. Are there any new staff changes for any of these heroes in the game, by the way? I don't think so. Nah, yeah, not that I could think of. I think Parasite's staff change should be taken over Condor and Ancients. What do you guys think? Would that be fair? Should I be the lead of balance? Staff of the Master Effect, Parasite, can now take over Condor and Ancients. Condor moves really slow. I don't see how that would be overpowered. <laughs> I wonder if my sarcasm's coming along. Coming off pretty well. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Parasite! Parasite's gonna take over the creep at the last second. He's gonna be fine. Rally just a little bit too far away right there. They thought they had a sure kill, but... Parasite makes the escape. <laughs> And he is going to be fine. I'm doing a better job than a Wasa. <laughs> I'll be sure to let him know that after this. <laughs> oh, that's that's funny. Oh, Parasite, Portal King away. They, they, they're still trying to hunt for this Parasite. They think, uh, they probably they think if they kill Parasite, the game's going to be won. Because in the meantime, their bottom tower is heavily being pushed in. 
They are going to start TPing back or listen. Okay, the base, different story. We need to defend that. Parasite not going to be with his team currently. Parasite with the Striders, by the way. I wonder if he's going to try to upgrade those in a post haste here ASAP. Shrunken head already on Wretched Hag. Is anyone surprised? Not this guy. The Grim War, 670 gold per minute, 660 even. Looking, looking good. So that shrunken head. Okay, there's a Mystic Vestment starting to come up here. Well, that, that's good to see. On the lead side. Oh, the big initiation! So Steel is going to stand no chance. He's somehow still alive, but it doesn't matter. Down goes him. Down goes Rally. Magnus in the background. He wasn't able to get his portal key off for whatever reason. Doesn't matter. Tempest will fall. There's the vote to concede, and I think that should do it here. Uh, oh, Andromeda died. Go game two, he says. Go game two, damn it. We want another chance. Tomato Esports making catch up out of DC Gaming. A tough loss. That was a statement that, game right the there. Wins. That was a hell of a statement game right there. Well, game number one goes to Tomato Esports. Congratulations, them. Again, the